Hi everybody, I am here with my hero, my mentor, somebody I really look up to. He's such a wise man and a very loving man. I see Jesus in him. Please, please, please. Father Bob, thank you. Delighted to be with you as always, Bo. And Father Bob, we're going to talk about the Mass. Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk about other things, but we're going to talk about the Mass. And I, I, I want to ask Father, you know, a lot of people tell me this, and very bluntly, Catholics tell me, Mass is so boring. I can't, I, nothing. I mean, I, I go there because it's an obligation for Sunday, and then I don't get anything from it. Well, it's basically at the very heart of it because everybody keeps the same law, whether you're young, old, rich, poor, it doesn't matter. And that law is called the law of diminishing return. The law of diminishing return. Any action repeated many times over a long period of time uh -huh. is not going to have the same return it had the first time. When you received your first communion, you were alive at Mass at that time, yeah. not bored at all. But if you go to Mass for the next 35 years as routine every Sunday, it's not going to have a re the same kind of emotional return. I guess so. I guess had the so. first time. The first kiss yes. with your wife, you know. It's the kiss by which you'll judge all kisses. And then the 10,000th kiss. Exactly. <laughs> will there not be, have the same impact. <laughs> has to be something deeper there, right? Okay. Exactly. But I think it's also because, Father, the, aside from that law, is that people don't understand what's happening at the Mass. This is true. You know that... Probably the best way I can put it is that if somebody goes for alcohol or drug rehab, yeah. the first thing that they're going to tell those folks is, you've been living your life E over I. In other words, emotion over intellect. Emotion. What we're going to do during rehab is teach you how to live I over E. So I think what you and I might do during these sessions yeah. is to kind of take a look at the mass I over E. I over E. Intellect over emotion. So okay. that if you go to a Mass and it's like we would have at the feast where everybody is alive, yeah. they would say, that was a wonderful Mass. Yeah. But if they go to a Mass where there's no music, no singing, okay. a kilometric homily, people <laughs> say, I was bored. Yeah. Did you ever come out of a Mass saying, that was so boring? Well, <laughs> it's because you looked at the Mass E over I. Wonderful. Let's look at it I over E for a singular purpose, and that is that you never, after you hear this series, attend Mass quite the same way ever again. Whoa. That's the challenge. That's the challenge. Okay, that's the promise that after you, you hear Father Bob and me talk about the Mass, over, over, you know, we're going to create a few episodes. Okay, short, tiny episodes, you know, bite size. You know, we're going to break up the Mass, Father. Is that okay? Yes, it's fine. You go, go through different parts different symbols exactly so that we can learn slowly and really absorb what's being said and that it's practical and that it makes sense so that you move from being less a, a spectator and more deeply a participator all right i love that okay. i love that so i over e and then your your whole idea that you know law of diminishing returns and and actually saying can can we recapture that first time yes okay Let's begin. All right. What's the first thing? I think we begin at the beginning by saying that the way it was before the Second Vatican Council was you went to attend the priest's mass. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> there was an altar railing there. And then I'm a spectator. You're a spectator. And maybe you would say your rosary or read a prayer book or follow along. That's right. But the mass was in Latin. I, I, rem I, I would see old people. I mean, when I was younger, I would see old people the whole time that there's a mass going on, they're praying. Of course. The, the rosary beads. Because it's the priest's mass. It's the priest's mass. That was yeah. the vantage point before. Exactly. Second Vatican Council said, time to remove the altar railing and invite the people of God not anymore to be spectators, but be participators and put it in a language that they understand. Yes. Maybe yes. some of the mystery at first will seem to disappear, the yes. mysterious yes. language. But at least the people will begin yeah. to get closer to what Jesus really wants to give. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, I love that. Next. All right. I think it's best to start at the very beginning. Why don't we come in like we did before 1962? We used to just come right out of the sacristy, okay. genuflect, face the altar, the people's backs would be to us, and we would begin, let me go to the altar of God. And the Wait a minute, say, Father, you, you, you reach that... How old are you? 
older than I once was, but younger than I'll be, but old <laughs> enough to remember I was an altar boy and I had to serve in the mass in Latin. Yeah, you had to serve in We didn't know what we were saying, but we said the words. Pre-Vatican <laughs> yes. was. Priest. Two. <laughs> Don't make me that old. <laughs> but we, we would say, Adeum quilates if he cut you, and to Let us go to the altar of God, the God who gives joy to my youth. What wow. beautiful words. But we didn't understand what we were saying. Because it was in Latin. And neither did the congregation. Precisely. Because and the, and the priest Latin. was facing the altar. He was facing we, the altar. We just looked at the back. That's right. Oh, the father's getting bigger now. Yes. Ate too much. Okay. <laughs> well put. Vatican Council said, no, there really should be an entrance procession because it's going to teach the people something very important about who we are. We are a pilgrim people is what wow. the Second Vatican Council called wow. us. Oh, well. So that's why it's a procession. That's why they're a procession. I thought right? they just wanted to go into the altar. Well, let's put it this way. You go on a vacation to get away from home. You go on a pilgrimage to find a home. Wow. The whole idea of the entrance procession is to remind us that we're pilgrims. And it's very scriptural, by the way. If you ever notice an entrance procession, what do we have? We have a cross bearer. Yes. Two acolytes with candles lighted, the book of the gospel, and then the priests. All right. We follow Christ and him crucified, St. Paul. Oh. You are, not you are to become, but you are the light of the world. That's what those two candles remind us of. And the gospel. Yeah. We are, as a people, not to be any more bad news, but to be good news. And then the priest, who is our mediator between Jesus and us. So, the entrance procession is going up the aisle. It reminds us that if we are pilgrims, yes. this is not our home. Oh. In that procession, it's reminding you and me, we're on our way home. Beautiful. While we're on our way to there, why not care, Neil Diamond says. <laughs> and he ain't heavy, he's my brother. So here's a practical trigger, I over E. Yes. Intellect over emotion. When the priest passes by your pew, that's an opportunity for you to do something. I will, any good that I can do, let me do it now, mm. for I shall not pass this way again. Look around without making it obvious. Look for somebody that looks like they've had a bad week. Somebody that looks like... You're, you're saying while the entrance song, you know, procession, yeah. you're, I'm, I'm looking around for somebody who's... It only takes a moment. Okay. And you can say before the Mass begins, a prayer to the Holy Spirit, yeah. when the priest passes by me as I'm singing, yeah. let me just look around a little bit and see if I can see someone that you want me to choose to adopt for that entire Mass. Wow. Maybe someone who looks like they've had a bad week. Yeah, yeah. Holding a baby, trying the baby not to cry. Yeah. Uh, somebody who looks angry or upset. Yes. Looks yes. like somebody might be bored during Mass. Yes. I adopt that person. I know you know what I want yeah. to pray about, but I want to offer my need to pray wow. for that person that I don't even know. And it, it takes you out of yourself. You know, maybe your own, you have your own problems, but then you're thinking for that person and praying for that person. That's genius. And think about how often you go to Mass and how many people that will be. Yes. At least 60 people a year times 10. That's 600 people in 10 years. Add it over the course of your lifetime, and St. Paul says that we're going to see the goodness of our actions to the very end. You'll <laughs> see how each of those hours that you offered. Oh, um, ah, there are things at Mass that we see and things that we do not see. Look how much we've got accomplished before the priest even reaches the <laughs> altar. <laughs> Father, that's amazing. Okay, that's our first episode, a little bite on the Mass. And what's going to happen is we're going to continue talking. So we're just in the procession and so more. Thank you, Father. Most welcome. See you in our next episode. God bless. <laughs>